What is up, guys? Logan here again, a day on the beach. You guys already know. Today I'm joined with Halcyon, and we're going to do some tips and tricks using TOS, or which is also known as Thinkorswim, from TD Ameritrade. So we're going to go over a couple of things in the monitor tab, how to organize your stocks, and then also we're going to look at how to copy and paste an order as if, you know, someone copied an order that they were in, send it out to you, and then you were able to copy it and then paste it and then take that same trade without using so much brain power. So let's get right into this one, but I appreciate coming on again, Hal Sayan. You got it. All right. Um, so a couple things. Uh, this is just to make your trading, um, keep you focused in on what you need to focus in on, which is what you're following and the setups that you're working towards. And then of course, um, you know, why are you getting into something or why are you exiting something or why are you managing something? So uh, the hope here is that this takes, you know, you have a, we always like to say, you have a finite amount of brain capital to use every day. And as many things that you can get on autopilot is uh, beneficial so that your brain's only working on the things that it really needs to pay attention to. So uh, a couple things here, and I, I highly recommend this for especially newer traders is to make your account um, in the privacy mode so that you cannot see what your overall PL is, current balances are. And the reason for this is because uh, we are emotional creatures uh, and seeing what your PL is doing from minute to minute is just, it will drive you insane, mm -hmm. especially if you are working on sizing bigger. Uh, and the, it will just, you will do stupid things when you're watching what your p and is doing. It just isn't a, it's an amazing emotional manipulator uh, into stupidity. So you, I highly recommend turning that private and don't look at it. Maybe once a week at the end of the week on the end of the, the end of the day of Friday or once a month. But really what your focus is, is not what your p and is doing. Your focus is, am I, is my setups hitting? Are they working the way they're supposed to? And what are, am I hitting my profit targets? The PNL will take care of itself over time. It's just uh, so many people get so focused in on did I make ten dollars more than I thought I was, and or am I down ten more dollars? Whatever it is, it, it, it's just a it's a terrible mindset to get into, and it's going to shake you out of trades more often than not. So, if you don't know this already in Toss, the way you go about making this all private is head over here in the top left corner, click on this. Uh, you can do option buying power, or you can click on the. Oh, no, we can't do that. Just kidding. So it's just after buy power. And then here's the little privacy button and click. Mm -hmm. And now if you notice, you can't see anymore any of the PL. It's all blocked out. And that's going to help me focus on what is important, which is my, you know, my setups and not what this is doing. That's secondary. Profit is secondary to making consistent uh, choices that are in line with what you are trying to achieve. Okay. So then the second thing that is really beneficial to do, and this is maybe not as, as big of a deal when you're using maybe just basic, you know, credit spreads or just long calls uh, otherwise, but when you're doing anything that has a tiny bit more complexity to it, say, for example, you have multiple calendars going or diagonals or some, a couple iron condors going on a couple of different strike series on one position, uh, it's really, really helpful to organize those into categories by which they stand. So um, you can see different areas that I've been, uh, that I, this is just my paper account that I use to do all the charting with, because for whatever reason, Toss, I don't know what the deal is, but you move 8 million times faster on paper on the charting than you do on the live accounts. So anyway, um, well, let's just take a couple of these trades and, and go ahead and put these into an organized area to make ourselves a little bit cleaner to find them instead of be clicking through all these. So I understand which ones are my call credits, which ones are my put credits. So in this case, I know that this Goldman is a, is a call credit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm gonna wanna organize him instead of having to say, okay, let me click through all these, remember which one is which on here. Okay, so first things first is, let's go ahead and take Golden X. We're gonna copy it. And then I'm going to uh, move it to a group. Okay, so that's the thing that we're doing here is move to a group. And I don't have one that I want to put it in right now. So I'm going to add a group. So let's go ahead and name this group. Uh, this is our call credit spreads. For me, I'm just calling this CCSs. So anything that's a call credit spread is going to go inside of here. I'm going to hit OK. 
And now when I'm searching through my positions, I know that everything that's a call credit is going to just fall underneath this category and then I can more easily look to see what's going on with this. Okay. Second thing is um, we could do the same thing with any of these positions. Uh, I think these are all put credits. I don't think I have a whole lot of call credits going, but even inside of individual positions, you can break them out into grouped categories. So for example, if you wanted to have, uh, did I do a call on this one? I feel like I did a call credit on one of these. Yeah, this one right here. This may have been a dumb move, but we'll find out. Um, so I'm gonna add him to the call credit side as well. There we go. So now I've just broken this out of the category. So now here's my Amazon and my Golden Sachs one. And we will, again, it just makes it so much simpler to get in here and look and see what you need to pay attention to or what you want to do. And of course, you can name these things based off. You want to get really zoomed into when they're expiring, you know, call credit spreads expiring the week of, you know, June for June 11th. In June 18, whatever. I mean, you can you can name them whatever you want, but it just helps simplify and make this um, so much cleaner and easier to navigate through. Again, more of an issue if you're trying to do, if you have a lot of different complicated, like for example, you're using SPX, you trade SPX most, and you have lots of complicated positions on with it. Uh, that that is a challenge trying to unwind those if you don't have them grouped together properly. So that is uh, what I wanted to suggest in this. Another thing too is based on what you see on this. So let's say we're looking at here and you want to you want to look at a few more pieces of information. So instead of just PLL open and PLL day, you can go ahead and customize this information over here. So let's say uh, you want to see what they all exist on the ADX. You can certainly put that on here. Um, let's say you want to have something that's more specific to what are the deltas doing on your option positions or what are your you know, for, for example, let's say what is, you, you know, one of your things is like if the CCI is at a, you know, a plus 100 and then you want to exit positions and you want to see that on here for some reason, you can always add those on. So you can always customize what you view here um, on whatever the default is. You can change that to something else. Um, and then of course, sometimes, I don't know if people necessarily uh, always deal with this, but sometimes the profit and loss, um, this sometimes throws people for a loop, the open and versus the day. Yeah. So real quick, uh, the open is from whenever the position was opened, that is your cumulative profit or loss. And then on the day is specific to whatever has done for that day. Okay. So just, just you're aware. Um, so there's that. That's the quick little gist that I think from at least the very beginning here is put your thing on privacy and then group your trades. Um, of course, Count statements. Uh, you're gonna help. You can go through and look through what your orders are doing. Uh, you can make these adjustments based on. So, for example, you're looking at your trade history. You can uh, adjust these to show different time frames. Um, this is 30 days. They're 30 days back, but you can make this as far as you want. You can put custom dates on here. Um, I believe the default is one day on the live accounts. Mm -hmm. And so, you if you want to look back further than a day, you need to make an adjustment on that. Uh, finally, on the trade side, this is so we're timestamping this. Uh, here is if you want to copy and paste orders, this is going to, especially if you're following a service or you're using somebody who's pasting orders or giving you what their, or, their actual order is, and you want to save yourself a bunch of time and not have to find your iron condor and every leg that's there and picking the right you know, time frames and strikes. Uh, this is, will save you a bunch of time. Or if you're copying your orders as you should be and placing them into some kind of journal Excel sheet or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can look back, you know, six months from now to see what kind of trades you were doing. This is another way to go putting those actual orders in so you can look at them. Um, so let's just take a good friend, Chewy. What do you do with Chewy after hours? Uh, not a whole lot. Almost unchanged. That's surprising. Um, so let's just take SPX, right? And we want to, let's say we were going to do some kind of, um, some kind of iron condor, right? Which is a, a there's a multi leg to that. So it's a little bit complicated in terms of entering them all incorrectly. There's room for error for sure. So let's just grab one. Let's see what it looks like. And we'll just, we're going to sell an iron condor here. So here's all the different legs that are going on with this particular one. Um, Sure, looks great. So in this case, if I wanted to give this to somebody else or if I wanted to copy and paste it for myself for some reason, uh, the way you do is you can do this in a couple of different ways, but you need to click 
I always use the link spot, but you can do it actually in multiple spots. But right click in the link area and you can go ahead and hit copy. There we go. And then if I were to paste this, which we'll go to somewhere else, let's go to say like uh, CRM to Salesforce. And let's say I'm here on Salesforace and you know, I'm just like, ah, I want, I'm gonna go back and look at that order again. I'm, at the, I'm still currently looking at a buy here. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go ahead and put that, you know, the iron condor on. All you do is go over here by this little paste uh, clipboard from the clipboard and click it. And then what it'll do is bring up whatever I had just copied, which of course is that iron condor, and it's all sitting here now, exactly how I wanted to see. Okay. So now here's a one little interesting twist. It should be a sell or a buy there. And then it should say limit at the end. Um, and toss at least, you, you don't wanna do market orders. It just shows the limit orders, which means you're picking the price you want to pay. Um, and then you can, you just literally, you can copy from here, copy, and then go ahead in and pick your pace. So again, you can be anywhere in here. And all you gotta do is just bring up the, the order entry. I mean, let's just say it was closed down. It's not there. Um, you can obviously do it by clicking there, or you can just click anything that would bring up the order entry mm -hmm. and boom, put it back in. Okay. So there you go. So quick recap, uh, monitor tab. All right. Make sure you put the privacy on, put that on privacy. Don't, don't look at this all day long to drive yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. Group your trades. It's smart trading over time as you get more confident, as you get more, um, as you increase the tools by which you're working with and your knowledge on how to do it all, um, you're going to want to add, you're, you're going to have more things going on, uh, most likely. So just keep them organized. Uh, and then second, when we're at the trade tab, you want to copy and paste trades, you know, whatever you decide to do on these things, um, pull up whatever you're going to do. When you get to this menu, just go right click, copy, and now it is on your clipboard. And you can paste it somewhere else or you can paste it back into, you know, toss if you need to, but that's how you get them. And again, if you're getting from somewhere else, they'll look like this format. Um, and you just copy that, yeah. grab it, you paste it in and it will obviously be there for you. So you speed up your time, save you a few minutes of trying to enter all the legs in properly. And you wanna make sure too that the lock right next to limit under price is locked. And you can unlock it to see what it's currently trading for. That's what I do a lot of the times. If I'm ever, if I ever copy and paste a trade in from somebody else, I always uncheck it to see what it's currently trading at. And then when you adjust your price to get filled, place the lock back on. I have before left it open and it just let it go for whatever the market price was then. It was still a limit order. But it was whatever. The it was an unlocked limit order, yeah. So then it would whatever the current when you hit that moment, yeah. yeah. I've done that before too. Uh, <laughs> I had that happen on a fill for an SPX calendar, uh, and it absolutely gave me an, an atrocious fill on whatever the thing, whatever I was doing. I forget what it was, but it was a huge difference between the natural and the mid, and yeah. uh, it was I got absolutely screwed in that because I didn't recheck the lockbox. So. That's all it takes. Learn that lesson quick. One little check you know, just to make sure yep. that it's on when you want to confirm and send, unless you don't care exactly, or you're trying to get what it is at right now. But I still think, you know, you can, you can adjust it, squeeze a couple more bucks out of it if you need to, and then you're good. I like it. Awesome. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on for the first part of the series of just learning TOS and I'm excited for more videos to come. Yeah, we'll keep cranking them out. We'll go into doing some of the analysis, analysis using the scan tab, how to, how to actually utilize that to your benefit because um, that's one of the most annoying things to do is scanning for yeah. stocks. I mean, that's, that's, that's really annoying. So, all right, man. Cool, cool. Well, I appreciate your time, man, and we'll have you back on soon. If you guys have yet to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe on this video, it would mean a ton to us. Check the Discord link in the description. You guys can come hang out and trade with us. We're doing the 3K to 10K challenge. That's going to be everything for us in this video, and we will see you guys in the next one.